so so excited for this um i am there she is uh promote to panelist okay andrea yes Okay. How are you? Is your camera working? Um, it absolutely should be. Hang on. I don't know why all of my settings have decided to. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Let me move this box. There we go. Let me move the box up and actually hit my video. Yay. There we go. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, we have, um, we, we've obviously, uh, yeah, we, we've loaded this up onto um, Facebook to make sure that, uh, hold on, hold on, I'm getting a little bit of feedback here. All right, I, oh, cancel, all right. Uh, let's do this again. Let's see. Mode. All right. Can you hear me okay still? Yeah, you sound right. great. I have no, I have no feedback issues. All right, perfect. Um, let me just make sure this is still streaming. Okay, it is. So um, obviously, it is such a, an honor and a privilege to have you on here. And you know, uh, having you know, we got to stream this through Facebook. But you know, you've been such an inspiration to me, you and Richard, in an instrumental in my life. And and you know, you and I have had three or four different Zoom conversations like this, just have. off the cuff, um, behind closed doors, just developing uh, our friendship and you know my admiration for you and Richard and what you guys have done. So first, for, for those that obviously they hear me shouting from the rooftops about your book all the time. So if you could introduce yourself to the audience that has only heard of Andrea Waltz, but now has the opportunity to see and hear from Andrea Waltz. Got it. Well, thank you so much, Scott. And I, I'm so glad we're talking again. Uh, we have had some really good conversations. And uh, yeah, so my name is Andrea Waltz, co-author of a book called Go For No. Yes is the destination. No is how you get there. Uh, the book is now 20 years old, which doesn't seem humanly possible, but it is. Uh, and it's, I guess, kind of one of those um, cult classics, if you will. And I only say that because we've been around so long and yet it we're kind of the only book in the sales motivation space that really tackles the whole idea of failing your way to success and how to look at rejection positively. I know a lot of people hear the term go for no and they think that's ridiculous. Who on earth would want to hear, who would want to get more no's? It's not just you know, that you're wishing, hoping, and praying for no, but it's how do we take those no's, make it positive, turn it into a positive reality, and move forward. So, and this is something that I, I teach. I have fully integrated my, the, the way that I grow my business, the way that I, I conduct my business in everything that I, and I, you know, your book, literally, it, it lays on my nightstand. It, 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 it's, it's part, it's like my Bible because it's been so instrumental in rewiring my personal thoughts because, you know, in, in starting an entrepreneurship, you know, and then, you know, owning my gyms and then getting into network marketing, you know, network marketing, they, they teach the concepts of, oh, you got to keep talking to people. You got to keep talking to people. But the concept of going for no and increasing that failure quotient, which, which everyone can do. Everyone can succeed in anything that they do, but they have to have the amount of conversations required to do that. So with, with what you know now, 20 years later, and, and having it still being so relevant in today's world, why are so many people so emotionally distraught by the word no? Well, yeah, it is still completely relevant in today's world, despite all of the technology and despite the fact that the technology protects all of us and we can sit behind a screen sometimes, play it safe, we can send emails and voicemails and, and never meet, and we do business with people across the country and never meet them, right? You never have to meet them in person. But um, 
the the reason I think is because we're all you know biologically wired to avoid failure and rejection. No one wants to be rejected. No one wants to be kicked out of the tribe. And yet here we are in a totally different world, having to fight our biology and fight that um, fight those fears and do exactly what you said: rewire our brain so that we think differently and that we don't let that potential for rejection. And it's just it's just potential. It's not even guaranteed. Although there is you're always going to get some no's. Um, but we let that potential rejection hold us back and keep us from doing what we're going to what we want to do. And um, it's relevant today because it doesn't necessarily matter if it's network marketing. As you said, it's any business, any industry. I mean, if you own a gym, people are going to walk in and they're going to go like, hey, what's the deal? What's the plan? And you have to say, well, here's the plan. It's a monthly fee. And, and, and do you want it? Yes or no. And, and you have to face your rejection. And I hear from actors all the time and casting directors who say, I make my actors read go for no because they have to hear no a lot. They have to be able to withstand that rejection. So it really is a reprogramming process um, that people have, you have to, the faster you embrace it, the faster you can learn to, to live it and the better you become. And, you know, you've spoken it at, you and Richard both have spoken at a multitude of conferences. You've spoken for network marketing companies in, in the network marketing profession as it is right now, even in the last 20 years, what, what has people, because you and I both know that, you know, entrepreneurs, they're a special breed of people. They, they think differently. They envision things differently. And, and you see a lot of people coming into network marketing as an opportunity to fire their boss and, you know, create all the time and money freedom that they want. But yet when it comes to doing the work, when it comes to having the conversations, when it, when it, when it comes to getting the rejections and the no's, where you know in the book it, it clearly states yes, the yes is the destination, but no is how you get there. Why do you still feel twenty years later, people are still not willing to go for the no's and stay in that little comfort zone of their friends, family, and warm market? Yeah, again, it comes back to the, the biology. And, and so again, we're, fight, we're fighting that biology, but also one of the things I did in my private um, coaching Facebook group is I, I did a little survey because I wanted to know from them, wh what are the things that you guys really fear? Like what are, let's look at the fears and let's dig deep. What is it that we feel, fear? Do we fear um, just like not making goals? Do we fear um, someone getting mad at us? Do we fear... Uh, of the failure? Do we fear success? I mean, all these things. And the interesting thing that I found, the number one thing that people feared the most was embarrassing themselves. Um, looking, you know, looking stupid in front of someone else. And that I think is your answer, Scott. It's, it's just not wanting, just being in your comfort zone and, and having that fear. And where does that come from? I think, again, it comes from a little bit, it comes from the biology and it also comes from, to, to a large extent, kind of how you were brought up, you know, it's, um, it's, we're all like taught by our teachers and parents, you know, behave and, and don't be, don't be ridiculous and don't stand out and, and don't push and, and certainly I don't want to suggest that go for no is at all aggressive, but we just get kind of programmed that, um, you know, we don't want to do that. And then you couple that with the final thing, which is perfectionism. And that's another thing that's so huge. And when you couple perfectionism with a desire to not want to mess up, the only option you have really is to not, is, is to stay in your comfort zone, is to not venture out, to not share things with people and to not fall on your face because you're not going to be perfect. It's going to, I, I remember the, first brochures that Richard and I created in our business, they were, if I showed you these brochures today, you would laugh. I mean, what today, you know, well, a five-year-old well, could you, create them. You, you shared a funny story with me about when you came out with the original cover for Go For No, and you were talking to a friend and he, he said he was ready to buy a certain amount of copies and then he gave you some constructive feedback. Share that story with everybody. Yeah, so uh, we had had go for no for a couple of years and we continued to struggle with it. We believed in it and yet we were also like, what's wrong? Why isn't this book selling? Because we, we knew we had something 
And this guy we met at a sales conference who's now become a really good friend, but we met him and he called us after we gave him a copy of Go For No. And we, we would hand out copies all over the place because we knew if somebody would read it, that you know they would they would like it and um he called us and he said you guys have written one of the greatest books uh, for sales like ever and we were we were like this is great and he goes but do you, do you have an open mind and we said well yeah and he goes okay well i want to give you a little piece of advice because you also have the worst cover in the history of publishing <laughs> and he said if you guys will change this i think it'll really help your book and then i will take five thousand copies and we were like, yes, we will hire a graphic designer. And why were we, why, why did that happen? I mean, we, we were, um, thank God we were coachable. Uh, there, there's many times that Richard and I are, we find that we're not. <laughs> it takes us a while sometimes. Finally, somebody opened our eyes and we said, all right, we're going to do what this guy says. We, we believe him. And, um, and, and, and that's what happened. But I think that without putting ourselves in that position to have that happen, you don't get those opportunities. And you've worked with thousands of, I mean, personally, you guys have worked with thousands of entrepreneurs, network marketers, but I mean, your book has sold. How, to date, do you guys know how many books have been sold? Well, we keep using the, the number, and I'm pretty sure we're well over it now, of 400,000. That's based amazing. on based on where we've where our sales have been on Amazon since it's been on Amazon since 2007 and before that we were selling completely offline we were literally just selling from the god awful website that i designed which which <laughs> by the way remember we're talking i was telling you about our horrible brochures and horrible websites and and in order to be good i mean you have to be bad so we we Ooh. everything that we've done in our business started off just just okay <laughs> and then we got better but I mean, you hit the nail right on the head. You have to be bad in order to be good because, again, just like the, the book, you know, the, the, when you speed up and you ramp up those failure quotients, when you're, and, and this is what I love what you said in the book, when, when you are willing to fail, when, you're, when you are going after failure, you're going to open up those doors to success. So, you know, you've, you've spoken at conferences, you know all about network marketing, tons of network marketers read this book. And then you obviously you co authored the network marketing version with Ray Higdon, which is mm -hmm. also brilliant. What do you still feel that network marketers are lacking today, that they still have to overcome to truly create that success in their business that they want? Yeah, well, that's a that's a great question. I think um, the network marketing profession has challenges like any business. And I think that um, certainly over the years, I've heard the biggest, you know, one of the biggest issues is just the idea that there's, there's a brick wall standing between a lot of network marketers right from the beginning. And that brick wall is people think that the profession's a scam, oh, it's a pyramid scheme and all of these things. And of course, when you look at every single business there is, um, you know, they're all in a way pyramid schemes. And so there are some, I think, um, limitations that are based in reality, but they also become used as excuses. And so it's really important for network marketers to say, okay, this, that is a, that is a reality. I have to deal with it and then move on from, from those things. I think the other thing that I've seen over the years is that there's always this constant desire not to be seen as selling. Like, God forbid that anyone ever know that we're selling something. And it's become, and call it what you want, if it's sharing or it's networking, um, all of those things are, are fine. But I think the more we stigmatize what's done, which is marrying a customer, because ultimately in network marketing, it's about the network marketing company organization creating a good product, whatever it is, nutrition or health or whatever, or a service, and marrying that product with a customer. And that is the job of the network marketer is, is taking the things that the company creates and marrying it with a prospect later customer, getting them to try it and getting them to experience it so that they continue to buy. And then maybe they end up also joining the company so that they can tell others. 
the more we demonize that process as sales and it, it can't be sales and God forbid that, and sell is a four letter word. I think it makes people struggle and they do that. It's done. The reason is it's done is because sales has such a bad rap, right? Nobody wants to be, I'm not a salesperson. I can't sell. And so I think it's, it's a challenge for leaders to figure out a way to, um, help people understand that selling is not a bad thing and that anybody can do it and that you're constantly selling even to your parents and your children and your friends. So just get over it, but let's not like pretend that it's so, let's not pretend and let's not make it so horrible. Let's, let's call it out and show it for what it is so that it can be elevated rather than we have to hide and be secretive about what we're doing. And the big thing is, is that what, what people still don't understand, the highest paid profession in the world is sales. Absolutely. S salespeople make more than doctors and lawyers. I mean, literally, if you look at the top earners in the world, they're, they're all like, like Jeff Bezos. I, I mean, Amazon is just, you're just buying stuff. It's, you're just, it's being sold on there. All that it's, you know, um, just so many people, so many successful people. You look at Steve Jobs and all of these amazing, amazing, Warren Buffett, all these amazing people, they're all in sales. So right. when people can understand that sales is the number one earning profession in the world and you embrace sales, you love sales, you love recruiting, you love marketing, you love talking to people, you love all those things, it's going to change your business. So let's talk about Andrea before go for no, because obviously you had to have some sort of aha moment or shining of a light moment where you're like, you know what, I really love no, and more people need to understand how they need to fall in love with this. So, so before go for no, what journey did you go on to get to that point where you're like, where you and Richard said, we need to write a book on this. We need to teach people on this because it's working for us and it can work for everybody else. Got it. So I um, love Go For No because I I need it just as much as as anyone, um, maybe more so, <laughs> because I didn't like to be rejected. I didn't like the word no. I am. I, I always joke that I'm a pathological people pleaser. Um, that is how I was. So I, I talk about these things with some authority because I that's where I came from. And and to me, if I uh, I didn't want anybody to say no to me because I want everybody to like me. And I still suffer from that to this very day. Um, so taking no personally, absolutely, I was, I was there. And I remember um, the very first personal development book I ever got, I was standing in a bookstore. I think I was probably, I don't know, 19 or something. I feel like I was in college, this is my memory. And I saw a book called, like, it was like, How to Get Everything That You Want. And it was The Aladdin Factor by Mark Victor Hansen and Jack Canfield. And fundamentally, The Aladdin Factor, the entire um, premise of that book is all about asking. It's, it's how to get what you wish, and it is all about asking who to ask and why to ask and when to ask and what do you say, what do you do if they say no and everything about asking. And then a couple years later, I'm working at Lens Crafters and I'm managing one of their highest volume locations and I'm doing really well. And Richard and I meet because he is in the training department and I start working with him in the training function. And he tells me this go for no idea through the story that's in the book about the guy selling the thousand dollars worth of clothing. He tells me the story and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, I get it. I'm going to do it. And, and I just loved it. And I would always challenge him. Um, Richard to me had, and still to this day has all the answers. So he would, I would challenge him all the time on sales philosophies and things. And, and then one day he convinced me to we should quit our jobs and we should go teach the go for no mindset and philosophy. And I was in because uh, not only did I just want to do something interesting and exciting and, and different, but I believed in the concept. And I realized that if I could, if I pathological people pleaser, scared to ask, don't want to step out of my comfort zone, could embrace this and start to use it on the job, which I did, and then use it in our business, then 
this could help so many people. And I just fell in love with talking about it. So now no one can shut me up. I just, I just constantly talking about it. 20 years later, and, and, you're, and you're not going to ever stop talking about it. But then you have people like me, who also was a pathological people pleaser my entire life. And I consider myself a recovering people pleaser. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still a nice person, but I've realized that, you know, I know my worth, I know my value. And, you know, I, I was never afraid of no, because, you know, you'll hear people say, they never tell you no. They'll say, you know, not right now, or maybe in a couple months, you know, you're never really told no. And they're not saying no to you. They're saying no to themselves because, mm -hmm. you know, we all have these little blocks in our head. Now, obviously you're going through this process and, and strangely enough for, for people that are watching this, you know, Andrea and I connected on LinkedIn and I, I did a post, it was probably about a year ago. I, I made a post about my, you know, my top five favorite books that have helped me. And obviously go for no is at the top of the list. And I tagged Andrea in the post um, as a second connection. And she obviously engaged and said, thank you so much. And then we became connections and that's how the relationship started. And, but that's what, and my book is based off of how to use LinkedIn to create the conversation so you can go for no. So in all the conversations that we have had and all the ideas that I have shared with you about my my principles and concepts of LinkedIn and marrying that to the concepts of the go for no mentality. You know, for, for the people that are on here that are in network marketing, that, that are, are still using Facebook and Instagram, from what you know now, because you're now active on LinkedIn and the conversations that we've had about LinkedIn, what, what advice or what feedback could you give those individuals in network marketing or entrepreneurship about the importance of not only using LinkedIn, but really embedding that go for no mentality into it? Mm. Okay, that's a great question. There's so much to unpack on that one, Scott. <laughs> There's so much. So, Unp unpack whatever you want. Okay, okay. First of all, um, congratulations on the book. It's, Thank you. Uh, get, it has so much buzz. Obviously, it's phenomenal and teaches people an actual skill, which is, I think, tapping into something that that people need, which is connecting, building those relationships, but also doing it in a positively persistent manner, um, doing it frequently and not making LinkedIn just the ugly stepchild of social media, which <laughs> I think for network marketing, it's yeah. seen that way. Uh, maybe people believe that it's some kind of serious uh, business, you know, super businessy place, or it's just for recruiters looking to hire people or whatever. Um, but I think, uh, and Gary, we've talked about this as well. Gary Vaynerchuk yep. talks about this. LinkedIn is the place for underpriced attention in terms of advertising, but it's certainly a place where you can get people's attention because of the fact that you can connect with them and they can see, I think, much more than something like Facebook, who you're really connected to and get a sense for who you are. So there's a lot of opportunities there. But the great thing that I think you're offering is that uh, you're taking the relationship piece and you're taking that and you com you're combining it with this go for no philosophy, which is um, you need to be reaching out, having the courage to reach out. How do you do that? Exactly what do you say? And when it is a, a no, not right now, how do you continue to create value for those people that are that you're connected to or maybe a second connection and continue to work with that relationship knowing that that not now could turn into a yes in the future? Mm. You know, it, it's so important because I think we, we live in such an instant gratification world and, and, you know, my entrepreneurial journey started when there really wasn't any internet. There was no Facebook, there was no social media. And it was, you know, literally me, me sitting outside on a stool at my gym and handing out flyers to join and, you know, just doing it the, the old school way, just like you and Richard were handing out books at, at events you were speaking at. So what it comes down to, and, and you and I have spoken about this, that, you know, there, there's opt-ins, there's click funnels, there's, there's all these email sequence strategies, but at a core foundation, what you can learn, not just from my book, but, but from your book 
is that human connection is the most valuable commodity for any business. Because when you can establish that rapport and that trust and that relationship with another human being, that's how business can be created. That's how partnerships and collaboration and creation actually comes from. And this goes back to The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles, which is the first money mindset book ever written. And he states that instead of living in a world of competition and comparison, live in a world of creation and collaboration, because when you create and you collaborate, that's how opportunities present themselves. So, and I ask you, and obviously you're going to be on my podcast later uh, in the next few weeks, which I'm really excited about. And I asked you this question, but I'm going to ask you again. You've had so many people give you feedback. You've had so many people share with you what they've taken away from this book. What is a share or a takeaway that you've heard from a client or a reader that you didn't necessarily expect them to take away from it that had you start thinking about the go for no mentality in a different way? Yeah, that's a good question. It, it's always interesting what people come up with because uh, even when we speak in 60 minutes, someone will walk up and they'll take one little nugget that to me, I think, oh, that's kind of insignificant. It's, it's probably 10th on my list of all the interesting things that we might share, but to this person, it just resonates. So yeah, you, you never know. I, I think probably the big one is um, just the idea of the fact that our main character meets a successful future version of himself. And this future version, who is 10 years in the future, has all this knowledge and wisdom and he's, he's really successful. And it's kind of like, well, where did these two people go awry? There's, there's the him of now, and then there's this future version of him. And how does he get to be that future version? And so one of the questions that a lot of people ask is, what would you tell yourself 10 years ago? today, what would you say? Like, cause you're, you are today are the successful future version of who you were 10 years ago or to whatever level you're at, right? And so what would you go back and say? And probably you'd say, well, in our book, you'd say, go for no, <laughs> don't forget to go for no, that's the secret. But I think a lot of people would say like, gosh, I would tell myself not to get so hung up on the details and to have faith and to believe and, and to, to understand it's all going to work out, you know, all of these great supportive messages. So that's probably one of the big things is just um, people being able to fantasize a little bit so that they see that, you know, what you would do today for the 10 years uh, past you will do that now. Think about what you what would happen now. And there's they're the same messages. <laughs> Yeah, because if you don't change anything, nothing's going to change. And if you change something, something's going to change. And, and, you know, conceptually, when people hear this, they're like, oh, it's so simple. It makes sense. Well, of course it does. Because, you know, a year from now, your life can be, can be completely different if you make the changes necessary around what you want your life to look like. And, you know, it's not going to happen a day. It's not going to happen in a month. And even a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, and that's such a great that's such a great piece to latch on to, you know, go back 10 years, you know, what would you tell your 10 year ago self mm -hmm. that you know now? And what would you do differently? And people ask me all the time, you know, would you ever change your journey? Would you ever change anything? And I would say no, because I wouldn't be where I am right now if I went back and changed things. And I use the concept of back to the future. And I'm mm -hmm. sure you remember this movie and, you know, and you remember when Michael J. Fox goes back in time, his, his mother starts falling in love with him instead of his father. And he's looking at this picture and it slowly starts to fade because he's changing the past, which is affecting the current and the future. So the fact is you can't change your journey. You can't change your past. It's already happened, but you can change what you do right now, which could change the future self of, your, of yourself. So final question. And, and again, I, I want you to, before we end, leave where everyone, I already posted where people can get the book on Amazon, but I know you have some private communities, you have some coaching programs, so I want you to direct people to that. Final question is, what, what's your best piece of advice to the network marketer that's watching and listening to this that has been going at it for five or 10 years or has been in it just for a few months or a couple of years, and they're just not happy with where they are. 
I love things in simple terms. Obviously, my podcast, Network Marketing Made Simple. What is one thing that someone could apply today to start changing their future self and their business? My favorite advice for that is, um, especially because I think if you are five years, 10 years, there's, a, there's obviously something wrong, right? There's obviously something's not working. And if something's not working, you got to make a change. From a go for no standpoint, for me, it's give yourself permission to fail. Right now, just like you would be training a five-year-old kid to ride a bike, give yourself permission to fail. Um, really embrace that and stop expecting perfection, which is holding you back from talking to more people and that fear of embarrassing yourself and all those things. Just embrace that failure. Give yourself permission to be bad so that you can overcome that and get to okay and get to good. I think that's that kind of difference. When I see people that are really successful, they just go like, screw it. I'm, I'm just, it's going to be a train wreck. <laughs> I don't care. My vision, my why, my dreams are more important than how dumb I look today uh, doing, learning this thing. I love it. So simple. But, and, and that's the thing is that I think as human beings, we tend to overcomplicate the process. And, and I constantly re remind people, get out of your heads and get into your heart because your head is always going to try to talk you out of what you should be doing. Always listen to your heart. You know, you, you, you talk about that gut instinct, you know, because mm -hmm. we, we do have another brain in our gut. You talk about that butterfly feeling. Your, your gut, your heart always know what's right. But you got to understand that, that uh, the, the lizard brain, you know, it, is, it's, it's fight or flight. It's right. always out there to protect us and keep us safe. So... If you play it safe, how are you going to create an abundant and amazing life? You have to take risks to reap the reward. So Andrea, obviously people can buy the book, but you do have some ways of you do group coaching and you have all these great online programs. How can people find out more about what you and Richard are doing for the go for no community? Yeah, um, probably the best way is to get into our, we have a go for no community page and in uh, February, well, it, it is February today, um, for Valentine's Day, I'm going to open the course and do a special Valentine coupon. So, um, you know, for people who want the course, I would say get into the go for no community Facebook page. It's really easy to find on Facebook. You just Google go for no, you'll find it um, and uh, start, you know, learning and getting motivated every day um, because I post pretty frequent motivation there and just create that no awareness. So that that's my, kind of my advice to get started with us. Awesome. Uh, Andrea, any last pieces of advice or words of wisdom to the watchers and to the listeners before we sign off? Hmm. Well, I think you know this by now, Scott, my favorite piece of advice is just live, go for now, do it all the time, do it with things that are safe, like asking, you know, for an upgrade somewhere, do it and practice it and then start doing it in scarier situations. And that's how you become great at it. I love it. So listen, Andrea, again, uh, I, I just appreciate your friendship so much. And it's so funny because I've been speaking about your book for almost five years now. And it, you know, people always think that, that people are untouchable, you know, this, this person's a best-selling author. They're never going to have time. And people need to understand when, when you and I connected, I, I sent you a connection request. I sent you a message. You wrote back, let's hop on a call. You know, we're all human beings. And, mm -hmm. and the thing is you're learning from me the way that I'm learning from you. We can all, we all, we don't know everything. We, no one knows everything. There's always a way for each of us to add value to someone else's life. So if you have that fear of reaching out to someone for the fear of rejection, you will never know unless you turn over that stone. And you hear that don't tiptoe through life arriving at your grave safely. Take risks to reap those rewards. And Andrea, as always, I just appreciate you and Richard and our friendship so much. And thank you so, so much for joining me today and blessing my audience. My pleasure, Scott. I so appreciate you as well. So absolutely. Thank you, my friend. Have a great rest of your day yeah. and uh, we'll be connecting again. You too. Soon. All right. Sounds good. Bye, Andrea. Bye. So as you guys hear, you know, this, you know, you guys have been hearing me 
talk about go for no for years and andrea I, I i can absolutely call her a friend if we need to hop on a call we we do we we speak and i i want you guys to go back and watch this you know you hear me talk about go for no all the time you hear me speak about this book all the time i i just want to no one is untouchable no one is unreachable the more that you fail forward the more that you go for no the more you're going to succeed so guys i hope you enjoyed this interview andrea if you're watching love and gratitude to you and richard thank you for joining me today love and gratitude to all you guys and i'll speak to you next time bye everybody